Hey there guys, and welcome to Cryptocurrency Australia. And today I had a video planned, a really good video. I was going to jump into a bunch of things. But just in the past hour, Mr. President, Mr. Donald J. Trump has come out swinging shots fired against Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And it's quite critical. So in today's video, we're going to be going through exactly what Trump has said, what it means, and some of the responses to this tweet, because um, it's really ruffled a lot of feathers. And despite him having support with a lot of what he puts out, this one is not the case whatsoever. So stick around, guys, and let's get started. Welcome back to the video, everyone. You are here with Bo Stoner from Cryptocurrency Australia, the place where Bitcoin economics and politics comes together. Now, here we have a tweet from the President of the United States on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And before I get into this, I just want to mention that of all the research I had done on the US administration and Donald J. Trump's stance on Bitcoin and crypto, finding anything related directly to Trump on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies was virtually impossible. I found a lot of content related to his administration and people in his administration that were pro-Bitcoin. Finding anything from Trump, I, I don't believe I found anything. So this could be the first official public statement he has ever made on Bitcoin and crypto. And that is extremely significant. Now let's read this word for word because there's a lot to digest and there's a lot to speculate on, on what this means. And I'm going to give you my opinion on it once we go through it. So reading, reading on. I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. Similarly, Facebook's Libra virtual currency will have little standing or dependability. If Facebook and other companies want to become a bank, they must seek a new banking charter and become subject to all banking regulations just like other banks, both national and international. We have only one real currency in the United States, and it is stronger than ever, both dependable and reliable. It is by far the most dominant currency anywhere in the world, and it will always stay that way. It is called the United States dollar. I mean, well, <laughs> well I can only, you know, my reaction is, is laughter really out of, out of lack of any any kind of other emotion um wow i mean it's 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 really full on but we're going to dissect this bit for a bit and i'm going to give you my take on kind of the message that trump is trying to send here and what this may mean for the future of bitcoin and cryptocurrencies so starting off i'm not a fan of bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air the fact that he's saying i'm not a fan just means that he doesn't like it. You have to remember, Trump is like 76 or 77 years old. He comes from the old world, the old financial institutions. You've got to remember, he's a businessman, he's an entrepreneur, uh, and he comes from the old world. Bitcoin and blockchain is, is highly advanced technology. That's why the main demographic into Bitcoin and crypto are millennials, um, because this is new world money. And also when he says money, the definition of money varies under different economic schools of thought. I subscribe to Austrian economics, of which Bitcoin fits all the requirements in terms of its hardness, its soundness, its denomination, it's a unit of account, it's a medium of exchange, I could go on and on. Bitcoin under that definition is super money. When he says highly volatile, he is right, but it is a new asset only 10 years old and in fact the volatility has gone down significantly over time in fact there have been periods where the, U the united states dollar has been more volatile than bitcoin at times now let's go into his actually this last bit here uh based on thin air fiat currencies are backed by the government back in the early 1900s there was a worldwide gold standard where issued currencies were backed by gold. They could only issue as much currency as, as was kept in gold reserves. So money couldn't be printed out of thin air. 
like it is today through things like quantitative easing or QE as they call it. Um, Bitcoin is backed by code, right? It's backed by code and it's also backed by the intrinsic value that comes from the energy input that goes into mining it. Other, there's many other kinds of value, right? So supply and demand is one. Uh, it's a very cheap payment system to use, especially with layer two lightning network. But let's get into the next section. Unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. Absolutely. But any form of value transfer, whether it's a barter trade, whether it's using fiat currency or whether it's using cryptocurrency, and facilitate unlawful behavior. You don't need money to facilitate unlawful behavior. And in fact, using crypto or Bitcoin for illegal activity is very stupid. Uh, case in point, the two FBI investigators that were involved in bringing down Silk Road and Ross Albright were caught two to three years after the case had finished having uh, uh, essentially extorted Bitcoin from the Silk Road administrators. How were they caught? Through blockchain analysis. Investigators looked at the record, the public blockchain record, and, f and were able to trace the transfer of the Bitcoin into the wallets, wallet addresses of the two inve uh, FBI investigators, the exchanges where the Bitcoin went to and was sold. One of the uh, FBI, uh, one, of the, the, one of the original investigators who had stolen the Bitcoin, sold enough to pay off his house. They were tracked, they were found, they were tried, and they were found guilty. And I believe both of them are now in jail. So crypto and Bitcoin are not talking about privacy coins, but currencies like Bitcoin, uh, uh, you, you're almost brain dead to use it for illegal activity. Uh, you will get caught. Okay, moving on. Similarly, Facebook's Libra virtual currency will have little standing or dependability. I have been saying now for nearly a month, that Facebook's Libra cryptocurrency will not go ahead. I think it's um, a sham. I think it's cheap. And I think it was, if anything, a distraction to move people away from the issues going on in the background with Facebook right now. Uh, Libra was never going to go ahead, in my opinion. So I agree with President Trump on that completely. If Facebook and other companies want to become a bank, they must seek a new banking charter and become subject to all banking regulations, just like other banks, both national and international. I see that as a completely reasonable statement, and I know that most crypto projects that are, like issue, are looking at like issuing their own uh, Visa debit cards or setting, them, setting themselves up as a bank have been doing exactly that. They have been, um, they have been going through the proper regulatory process to become a, a chartered bank. Okay, moving on. We only have one real currency in the United States, and it is stronger than ever, both dependable and reliable. But that's a very strong statement. Essentially, what it's putting out there is nothing's going to replace the United States dollar. We control it. We're going to continue to control it. And by the way, it's doing very well. And he's right. In Australia, the Australian dollar is doing quite well as well at the moment in terms of inflation. Uh, and uh, so that's essentially what he's saying is our dollar is strong. Nothing's going to replace it. We control it, and thus we have significant leverage over the entire world because the United States dollar is a reserve currency. Uh, we can control countries through things like uh, sanctions. Can't do that. The world's on a Bitcoin reserve currency. Can't do it. So, you know, fair enough. And the last bit he says here, it is by far the most dominant currency anywhere in the world, and it will always stay that way. It is called the United States dollar. <laughs> so what he said is, hey, US dollar's not going anywhere. We're trying to clean up the economy. He's done a great job in the economy. Can't take that away from him. You know, I heard him in this morning in one of his videos said, uh, yeah, the, uh, some, some of the people's 401ks in America are up 77%. That's cool. But also if you had bought Bitcoin in the last two years, uh, you'd be up uh, significantly more. Not discounting 77% as being a bad thing. Certainly not. But this is a strong statement. He's now made a public stance with Bitcoin and crypto. So he really can't be questioned questioned on this. It's doubtful he will change his stance anytime soon. Uh, as the President of the United States, he has to be perceived as being strong, as a strong leader. You can't just flip-flop around certain issues. He's obviously had a lot of time to think about this or he's been advised on this. So I don't see him changing anytime soon. 
what does this mean for Bitcoin long term? I think Bitcoin will be fine. I think Bitcoin will continue to operate, will continue to grow in terms of its users, in terms of its market cap. Uh, and through his language, he's merely said he's not a fan. It's highly uh, unregulated crypto behavior will probably be brought with, um, will be either there'll be regulations that will de list them from exchanges or there'll be other regulations as we've, as we've seen with the FATF in terms of them wanting more stringent KYC processes for wallet addresses generated on phones or on any device, thus taking away a level of anonymity with using Bitcoin. Fair enough. If that's what they need to continue for, for this industry to survive, so be it. But overall, I, I don't see this as a major issue. And funnily enough, the market has actually reacted, <laughs> reacted in a positive way since I last checked that it's actually gone up slightly in value. So now let's look at some of the comments because I think some of the, like I read every single one of President Donald Trump's tweets. I like this president. I think he's incredible. He's doing a lot of amazing things for the world. But this tweet, I, I don't think I've ever seen him get so much pushback. Um, and from a lot of really significant, clever, successful people who I personally um, follow and respect and admire. So let's read through some of these. Here's one from Jesse Powell. Jesse Powell is the founder and CEO of Kraken, one of the world's biggest crypto exchanges. Mr. President, one could say the same of unregulated fiat currencies, like the privately operated US dollar. The advantage of cryptocurrencies is that they are predictable and transparent. Regulated or not, useful tools can be used for good and evil. Don't let the US fall behind. That was a nice measured response from Jesse Powell. Next up, we have Caitlin Long. Caitlin Long is a significant uh, legal figure in the crypto space, very intelligent woman, and has largely been behind a lot of the progress that Wyoming has made in terms of state regulations for using blockchain uh, as a ledger for assets, things like property rights. So reading into Caitlin's comment here, Mr. President, Wyoming, the state that gave you the highest margin of victory in 2016, even bigger than Reagan welcomes law-abiding crypto companies and created a new type of bank charter to allow them to comply with the law. You are just wrong on this. Your staff is misleading you. Your staff isn't giving you the good advice. I don't see anyone on your staff who has experience in this new asset class. The US payment system hasn't really innovated in 50 years. It's unstable and inefficient. I've been surprised that your administration has coddled it instead of opening it up to healthy competition. The crypto genie can't be put can't be put back in the bottle, and if the US fights this, we will simply be bypassed by other countries that are welcoming it. Banks tried to shut down crypto by shunning the industry, and look what happened. It didn't die. Why? Because it's the first serious payment innovation in decades. Yes, crypto is used for illegal activities, but much less frequently than the dollar is, and crypto is easier to track. Check with the FBI. She's referencing what I mentioned earlier. Mr. President, you don't need to choose between crypto and the dollar. To close, please invite crypto export experts to advise you. You need to hear the other side, and you need to understand what, how Wyoming has created a regulatory compliant framework to let this innovation thrive in a lawful manner and ensure the US keeps our lead in financial services. Fantastic tweet there from Caitlin. Intelligent, measured, covered a lot of interesting things, and um, really, really great comment. Next here from Safer Dean Amos, the author of, quite frankly, the best book on Bitcoin and Austrian economics I have ever read. An alternative take. <laughs> and then he just puts a link to his book. I love it. Short and sweet to the point. Nice work, safe. One here from Charlie Bellello. Returns during the Trump presidency. US steel down 58%. Peabody Energy down 9%. US dollar index down 4%. Bitcoin plus 1,186%. Nice, Charlie. Crypto the dog. Are you saying the US dollar doesn't facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activities? Next one. The dollar is based on thin air too. Absolutely. One here from Gemini Exchange, uh, founded by the two Winklevoss twins. Bitcoin is underpinned by math and cryptography. Like gravity, it works whether you believe in it or not. Nice. I like it. Stephen Walk. The US dollar's value is also based on thin air. The gold standard is history. It's called fiat currency for a reason, and he's absolutely right. Another one here from Gemini. We've elected to put our money and faith in a mathematical framework that is free of politics and human error. I love it. That's, that's really good. That says a lot about Bitcoin's value proposition. And there's some Binance scams. Uh, what's some other good ones? Another one here from Gemini. Bitcoin, it's freedom. It's every American. Uh, some other good ones. There were some other good ones here. 
One here from Gab. You are wrong about this. Bitcoin is free speech money. One here from Niraj. The public internet needs public payments infrastructure like Bitcoin. Without cryptocurrency, a cashless society is a surveillance society. Very interesting. Some other interesting ones. One here from Preston Byrne. Hey, I'm basically the only guy in the crypto industry who voted for you or admits it. Can I convince you otherwise? Nice. I like it. One here from Richard Hart. Uh, $11,295 was the Bitcoin price on 5.15, uh, 7th 11, 2019 when you made this tweet. You'll be curious about that one day. I love it. Uh, one here from Melik. Good luck with your position. <laughs> it just shows a chart of how the USD has gone down in time, uh, down in value over time due to inflation and things like QE, quantitative, e uh, quantitative easing. One here from Mike Cernovich. Very interesting. Mike Cernovich is a very big figure. I believe in the conservative space. This is a major mistake on your part and shows a lack of vision. Very, very interesting stuff. So, like, guys, we'll wrap it up there. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been so interesting trying to track how Trump himself feels about Bitcoin and crypto. Now we know. Not a fan. Am, am I worried? Nah. He's 77 years old. He's a smart guy. Don't get me wrong. Very smart guy. He's surrounded by smart people. Look at the people he's surrounded with. So Stephen Mnuchin, he is the Treasury Secretary. He worked at, uh, I believe, either JP Morgan or one of the major banks that relies on the traditional financial system. No surprise that Trump has this stance based on people like that he has around him. Stephen Mnuchin is also behind the push from the FATF to implement essentially global regulations requiring higher levels of KYC on wallet addresses. I've covered that in a previous video before. I don't so much see that as a really negative thing for the industry. I see positive regulations actually as a good thing. Um, but yeah, look, now we know how Trump feels, but on and upwards. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate your time. Catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed the video today, then please consider leaving a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then come on board and also click the notification icon so you're always kept up to date. Leave a comment and tell me your thoughts on today's content. Then check out this next interesting video picked just for you.